Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here I discuss and describe a lot of topics related to psychology and neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand and for you to know more about these subjects. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. Today's topic is a topic that is very important to me. The topic is about clinical neuropsychology. As you know, I am a clinical neuropsychologist and then I am very interested in these topics. What is clinical neuropsychology? What it is? How professionals with a degree in clinical neuropsychology work? What they do? These are some questions that I will try to show to you here. And I hope you understand and I hope you learn a little bit more about this subfield, sometimes from psychology, sometimes from neurology or neurosciences. So stay tuned and let's go! These are the manuals that I recommend to you if you want to explore clinical neuropsychology. These are the manuals that are, I think that are very important to understand and to study more about this subject. So now let's see what is clinical neuropsychology. Clinical neuropsychology is the application of a neuropsychological knowledge to the assessment, management and rehabilitation of people who suffered illness or injury, typically injuries based on the brain injury, which has caused some neurocognitive deficits, such as deficits in executive functions, attention, memory, which have expression in uh, behavioral dysfunctions. So people tend to have more difficulties in everyday life situations. So clinical neuropsychology is focused on the assessment and rehabilitation of acquired brain injury, such as stroke, aneurysm, traumatic brain injury, neuropsychological syndromes, such as the executive syndromes, agnosia, and aphasia, alexia, and so on, learning disabilities, such as dyslexia, dyscalculia, neurodevelopmental disorders, such as HDHD, Tourette's, and neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer, Parkinson, frontotemporal dementia, and so forth. Also, clinical neuropsychology is also focused on the assessment of neuropsychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar and so forth. Clinical neuropsychology is primarily focused on the assessment and rehabilitation of alterations in the brain functioning. And the brain functioning is very important in different kind of processes. These processes may be viewed as neurocognitive processes. These processes are uh, a result from the integrated brain functioning. So, the neurocognitive functions or the minds that are typically assessed by neuropsychologists are executive functions, which uh, have comprised these functions such as inhibition, adaptating, shifting, planning and decision-making. Another domain is complex attention and uh, within this domain we can find arousal, sustain, selective, alternate and divided attention. So uh, that's why it's called a complex attention because attention is not one process but different kinds of different sub-processes. Also, reasoning, when we can find deductive, inductive, abstract or concrete thinking. Memory, of course, clinical neuropsychologists are very focused on memory. It's a hot topic in neuropsychology. Within memory, we can find working memory, declarative, semantic, recall and cued memory, which are two different processes. Language, 
uh, language is also very important for everyday life and that's why a clinical neuropsychologist is very focused on language. Within this domain we can find fluency, expressive speaking, understanding and writing. Perceptual organization is also a hot topic in a clinical neuropsychologist because it has lots of impacts in everyday life. Imagine if you can't describe and differentiate the distance between your hand and other objects. This is some kind of deficit. Sometimes individuals who suffered from traumatic brain injury or strokes may have if some kind of cortical connection uh, that is responsible for perceptual organization is impaired. So, psychomotor functions such as praxis and gnosis, access to knowledge, social cognition and personality, intelligence and self-reflection skills, and of course dysfunctional behavior and symptomatology typically driven by impaired brain uh, functions. So, as I said to you, a clinical neuropsychologist is based in the principles of assessment and principles of rehabilitation. It's a fundamental aspect of a clinical neuropsychologist that has lots of tests to assess different brain functions that could be impaired and, and to use the product of the assessment to develop new ways and new kinds of rehabilitation which is tenderly to be focused on individual characteristics and individual difficulties. As you are seeing from the beginning to here, clinical neuropsychology is based on two great aspects. It's the clinical assessment and the clinical rehabilitation. Assessment is based on the identification of neurocognitive deficits and rehabilitation It's the principles that guide how uh, clinical neuropsychologists intervene with uh, these kind of subjects. For instance, a person with um, a frontotemporal dementia, how he can rehabilitate the frontal lobe functioning. It's uh, uh, different kinds of exercises to executive functions, selective attention or inhibition procedures. So, as I said before, the neuropsychology uses standardized neuropsychological tests to assess cognitive and behavioral performance and to link them to specific uh, neurocognitive processes. Of course, these tend to be an individualized uh, neuropsychological assessment which is focused on specific um, difficulties that specific individuals bring to the session. Of course, and the neuropsychological tests are a product of a standardization process. Some types of uh, clinical neuropsychology methods or instruments may be Vestral Memory Sky, Wisconsin Card Sorting Test, the Bento Visual Tension Test, and so forth. Another method that a clinical neuropsychologist may use to understand how brain and behavior may be related is by using brain scans such as functional magnetic resonance, positron emission tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and computed axial tomography typically known as CAT. So, don't worry if you don't know what these uh, brain scans are. In the future, I will produce different videos talking about them. So, there are other projects that uh, may help or may be related to clinical neuropsychology, such as Global Brain Project. Another kind of assessment that neuropsychologists use is electrophysiology, uh, such as electroencephalography or magnetoencephalography. And another way that clinical neuropsychologists may also explore how a brain and behavior relationships may be impaired is using experimental tasks where the outcomes are reaction times and accuracy to explore performance in that tasks. Keep in mind, there are lots of things that were not covered in this video. However, in the future, I will look to these things and I'll try to explain them in the future videos. So, stay tuned if you want to know more about clinical neuropsychology. So, now let's just summarize the contents of today.
So clinical neuropsychology is a branch of psychology and a neurology that studies the relationship between brain cognition and behavior. And clinical neuropsychology is focused on brain injury and neurocognitive processes. Uh, we look to neurocognitive functions such as attention, memory, executive functions and others. So, and a clinical neuropsychologist is based on the assessment and rehabilitation of that impaired neurocognitive functions. And we also saw that um, clinical neuropsychologists may use different methods and different kinds of research to explore the relationships between brain, behavior and cognition. So, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's team to look to the manuals that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and you can also leave a comment to express your thoughts and to express your mind. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!